If you ask me, there's only one acceptable way to micro-optimize PHP code, and it's probably not the way that you would expect. Micro-optimizations are not worth their time in 95% of all cases, but by bringing them on a whole different level, they suddenly are. In this video, we talk about micro-optimizing PHP by looking at one example, five different ways of testing if an array is empty, and why you should not care about which version is faster. Moin, I am Benjamin and me and my team are laser focused on PHP performance topics for the last 10 years. And we have helped thousands of developers, companies and open source projects to improve performance. The story for this video started with this thread by Halibut on Mastodon, where they asked about the most efficient way to test for an empty array and shared their surprise about the result of their own micro benchmark. Using this starting point, I want to discuss a few problems with micro optimizations that can mislead you and why you ultimately don't even have control over the end result over time. The reason is the PHP engine itself. It constantly evolves and includes new optimizations for commonly used code patterns. This starts, for example, with specialized opcodes for common functions like string length, count, get class, get type, and more and more complex optimizations like the sprintf to string interpolation conversion that was added in PHP 8.4. It is also affected by little things that you don't have control over, like using Linux with GTC compiler or Mac with a C-Lang compiler and their differences in optimization possibilities engine implementation details that are different for operating systems and different modes of operating the virtual machine of PHP. But we are getting ahead of ourselves and should start with this example again. Let's look at an empty array test and write some benchmark code to compare. The first bear trap to fall into when micro-optimization with PHP is the opcache optimizer. If you design your examples too simple, then opcache might just optimize them away, as my colleague mentioned in a reply. On the question of how the benchmark script designs, Halibut answers that he just initializes the array in a variable and then ran a loop over it, um, which does the comparison, the operation. The problem with this is that opcache might see that the loop is not actually doing work and optimizing the loop away completely. We start off by looking at the examples that Tim provided to make sure the optimizer isn't too clever. The first example is using the NOT operator, testing that the array is empty by using uh, the exclamation mark. The second example we want to look at is using COUNT with an identical operator to zero. And there's also the secondary example of using count within a namespace, which we see the what the difference is in a few seconds. The next example is that we are testing the emptiness of the array using empty function. Then we also test emptiness with the identical operator using three equal signs and an empty array. Also, we tested using the equal operator and these are the different examples that we can test each uh, against each other to see if a, a PHP array is empty or not. And from the outset, you don't really know which one is faster. You might have a few assumptions based on your knowledge of the PHP engine, um, maybe function call overhead versus other things. But we cannot really be sure and we should run, run a benchmark. For micro benchmarking, we are using a tool called Hyperfine and you will find a link to it in the description. Um, it's our preferred tool of choice and for experiments with uh, benchmarking data. And we also have a blog post explaining why we like to use it and how it works. In this case, I'm running it on my Mac and we will see a little later the operating system is important here. I have a small script run sh which runs hyperfine with this uh, different scenarios. PHP with the not, equal, identical, count, count namespace and empty functions. Let's run this. 
Hyperfine then executes all those scripts multiple times um, and it makes sure that they are not interfering with each other a lot. Uh, in my case here, because I'm uh, streaming the video, it's uh, taking a little bit longer than without it, but um, the general proportions are the same, so it's not, uh, not a problem to look at that. Uh, after all the different thing, uh, scripts are ran into each other with Hyperfine, we, uh, it will compare them and it will also use statistical comparisons to make sure that we don't only compare the one single value, but also compare like um, sort of the, the standard deviation, the variance in the script runtimes to each other to really make sure this is a fair comparison. The result on my Mac is that the empty test is the one that is fastest. The next one is uh, the identical, um, uh, with, which is 2% slower. Then the not test is 9% slower than empty. Um, count is 15% slower and equal is 17% slower. And the slowest is actually uh, by a huge margin if we execute count in a namespace. So this is a little bit different to the results that Halibut had in, in his uh, example. He was probably running on, on a Linux machine because his result was that the identical test was actually much slower than empty not and count. And we can see this uh, by run, uh, rerunning the tests on a uh, Linux machine where I ran those tests before uh, on a machine, on a server that I have. And um, here we can see not empty and count uh, are within like 8% performance and the identical check is actually much slower at 50% slower than the not test. Um, equal and count namespace being much slower as well. Let's discuss a few reasons why these uh, different cases look so different in performance tests. And we can um, learn a lot about the engine by doing this. So one thing that we should look at is the difference between a function call and not a function call. So the tests for not identical equal they are not using functions to perform this test. And in comparison, empty count and count by namespace, they are using function or function-like constructs. So if you know a little bit about PHP, you know that the overhead of calling a function, be it an internal function or a userland function, is quite significant compared to inlining the code and not calling a function at all. So we would expect that the count empty and uh, count namespace examples are slow. And for count namespace, we see that it's actually super slow. Why is count and empty not significantly slower or even faster than the cases where no function uh, is being called? The reason for this is that the engine is optimizing um, a few central functions of PHP into specialized opcodes that don't even call the function anymore. So how do we find out which ones these are? So it's not actually quite easy. There's a list of them deeply hidden in the PHP source code, but we can use a feature of opcache to look at all the opcodes that a script um, translates uh, for the virtual machine of PHP and we can see how they look, uh, how these examples we have here look in opcodes and compare what they actually do. So let's use this opcache opt debug level uh, with this bitmask to look at the count namespace example first. And in the count namespace example we can see here that we initialize a namespaced function call foo count. We are sending a variable to the function, then we call this function 
And then we make an is identical check here. So this is this part of the code. So this block here is actually the function call. So um, we would expect empty and count to look a, a similar uh, without the namespace component, but similar. However, uh, this is not the case because the opcache optimizer does some things here. Let's look at the count example. So we are, again see here is identical equals zero in our count example here. But instead of uh, initialization and the do function call, we see a specialized opcode here for count. And this specialized opcode is generated by the opcache optimizer. And this is where an additional caveat comes into play. If your micro benchmarking code on the CLI, then you need to make sure that opcache is enabled because otherwise you cannot make a true comparison and make assumptions about how the code runs in a web server where opcache is always enabled. So let's call php info and we look for opcache enable CLI and then we can verify that on my test machine enable CLI is on. So uh, we know that already since we have this specialized opcode here. If we run this code again with d opcache enable CLI zero, then it doesn't print the op uh, codes because that's a feature that only works when opcache uh, is enabled. But it also, um, if we could see them, it would um, actually do a, a regular function call here with the additional overhead. So also let's look at the generated opcodes generated by empty. We can see here we have is set empty. So it's also a specialized opcode. And these specialized opcodes have comparable performance to, for example, the not operator, which when we look at the not operator, um, the, it also has a specialized opcode here, bool not for the variable, and then it performs uh, the empty test. Uh, no, it doesn't. Be, so this is the way it performs the empty test. So we can see one huge caveat of micro benchmarking specific code is that the opcache optimizer works its magic and it can elevate the performance of functions depending on opcache being enabled or not um, and how you use the functions. So if you use a function like count, which can be op optimized by an opcode, this would not work in a namespace. And uh, we also have a blog post about that, that I link in the description. If you say use function count and then generate this again. Oh, that's nice. It doesn't work. Why? That's confusing. That should have worked. Maybe I have to prefix it this way. Okay, I've confused myself. Honestly, I think um, maybe the optimizer does this in a later step and we can't see it here. That's probably the case. So the optimizer might do this after printing out them. So using use function count or prefixing with a slash uh, it imports the count from the global and it looks the same uh, like um, if we have this count here. So this is one difference uh, that we have and why the performance for not and empty and uh, count equals zero is so close to each other. And on a Linux machine, the identical test has such a different performance. So let's look at the opcodes for identical. So we have is identical here uh, and it's also a specialized opcode, but remember from the Linux test that still the identical code was much, much slower. So it really depends on like how the engine implements the small things, how it works and um, yeah, how we can rely on them. And I've also showed how the performance is much different between Linux and my Mac system. And the reason for this is that on Mac, PHP is compiled with CLang 
and CLang just has different optimizations that have been programmed into PHP, different virtual machine modes um, compared to GCC. So Linux and GCC are more optimized than CLang, uh, for, at least for PHP. So using uh, a platform that is, has a GCC based PHP is going to be faster in some edge cases because the engine can provide better virtual machine codes uh, and uh, run better things this way. And now the magic happens. What if we change the virtual machine to uh, produce better output based on the different variables that we have, the information we know, and make one operation better than before? And this is what Tim did after uh, discussing this benchmark uh, on Mastodon and looking at the different things. He sat down and uh, performed a change of the virtual machine. He added an opcode specialization for the um, identical empty array test. And the result is actually quite fascinating. Uh, on a Linux machine, this becomes the fastest test now, where previously it was the slowest one. And how does it work? If we look at the code, then we can see here that in the engine we can add specialized uh, handlers for opcodes and we can only run them or use them if there are certain conditions which are true uh, during compilation. The engine already knows during all compilation and optimization that certain uh, things are true about variables. For example, a certain variable is an array and um, then it allows us to run specialized code instead of the more general code for the zend is not or zend is identical opcodes. And what this change here does is providing us with a benchmark where we can see that the identical test ran 4% faster then the empty test, 4% faster than the not test, and 30% faster than the count test. So it's a significant improvement over the state previously, and this pull request was merged for PHP 8.5. On Mastodon, Sarah summarizes my own thoughts on this issue fully. Just use whatever you find most readable. You have no control over what is the fastest way today, and constant, it's constantly changing based on the engine, and different input variables. And to be honest, the small percentage change between the different fast options is just so minuscule that it doesn't really make sense to perform the work. Also, it's not really feasible to change the code all the time when the engine changes. You wouldn't go and change the whole code base between versions 8.4, 8.5, just to benefit from those small percentage changes. You can just lean back and trust that the engine developers of the PHP project are going to work on optimizations down the road and the code that you write today is probably going to be faster in the future. It only really makes sense to start optimizing if on the micro level, if a profiler confirms that the code that you've wrote is really, really slow. That means by optimizing the code, you can shave off like 5 to 10% of the total request time of a script. In that case, it really makes sense to perform the optimization. Otherwise, if you have just 1% optimizations, you really need to find quite a bunch of different optimizations, stack them on top to get a result that is meaningful to users and visible um, and psychologically um, an improvement that users can actually feel. If you want to learn more about PHP performance and optimizations that really move the needle, see a few other videos on this channel. And if you want to stay on top of PHP performance topics in the future, please subscribe to our newsletter for more. The link is in the description. Bye!